are fearfully and wonderfully made and we are so glad that you're joining us for Hope Today because we love to spend this time to encourage you, to edify and uplift your spirit. We're so happy it's Friday and I'm so glad it is a girl's day here. So I'm here with Angela and Anna. And Anna, tell us about what we're talking about today because we're going in deep talking about the ladies today. Yes, we <laughs> surely are. As women, as believers, really, we're taught that God has given us a spirit of power, love and a sound mind. We may know this truth, but how do we live into it and become victorious over fear, worry, and negative thinking? Well, our guest, Tara Lynn St. Allen, is no stranger to the battle. She joins us in just a few minutes to share her personal struggles and how she, along with each of us, can live victoriously over any debilitating emotion. Angela, it is a powerful thing when we get that victory to overcome fear, worry, and anxiety. Yeah, we're called as believers to live from that place, right? He didn't go to the cross, suffer, die, rise again for us to live defeated, but he went there that we may be victorious. And so today we hope that as we're talking with Tara Lynn, whatever it is that's on your plate, whatever worry you came with, maybe you woke up this morning and you feel really anxious from a dream you had or a thought of the things from the past or what your future holds. Today, God wants you to know you are victorious. He holds your future and he's holding you. You know, Sydney, I think that this is a space for all of us that we can go, have ebbs and flows of sitting in worry and sometimes feeling truly victorious on top of the hill. Yeah, you know, one of my worries this year that God spoke to me when I turned 35 as he said this was the year of victory and I've just been standing on that everywhere I go I see victory and we have a God he's a God of victory that you know one of my favorite words or favorite names of the names of God is Adonai Sabad it means the Lord God our warrior it is in the Bible, it's in the story of David and Goliath, is that's what God, like David called upon God. Mm -hmm. So today, whatever you're battling, whatever you're facing, if it's debilitating thoughts, if you're feeling that anxiousness like Angela was just bringing up, whatever it may be, know that you have a God that is for you. Know that you have a God that's walking in the midst of whatever situation and circumstance that you're going through and know that he's a God of victory. And sometimes, you know, I like to rehearse the victory sometime, Anna, where I look back at like, okay, if you did this before, I know you're gonna do it again. Yeah. And there's nothing that can hold me back. There's nothing Thing that isn't too impossible. Yeah. That's right. He stands at the beginning and the end of all things. He is our warrior. And I just believe that this is a day that he is calling us as women, as the church to rise up, to come to the battle lines, because guess what? We too are warriors for Christ to have the victory and overcome anything that the devil throws our way. So today we get to talk about reigning supreme over your inner world. That means if you're battling fear, anxiety, or negative thinking, this conversation is for you. Our guest, Tara Lynn St. Allen, joins us to share from her own struggles and how she gained victory through the power of God's word. So Tara Lynn, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here. Well, I just have to start off by sharing a little bit of who you are because it's very cool. We love when we have young people with us. You are a millennial. You're also a fashion editor for Cosmopolitan Magazine and you were crowned Miss Black New Jersey in 2018. And so you just come with like some very unique experiences and you get to inspire women to live big, to dream big and walk in all that God has for them. And your book is called She Reigns and uh, it's conquering your triggers, fears, worries from God, with God's truth. So tell us like what compelled you to write this book now? Life, <laughs> literally just life. Oh my goodness. So I signed a three book deal when I was 23. I had no idea what those books were going to be about. I just knew my mission is to show women their crowns in Christ. And so when I did those other ones, I was like, okay, yay, like, let's do this. And then for the third one, I was like, what am I going to talk about? Like, I don't understand God. Like, what do you want me to say in this one? And um, it, was, it was just so funny how it happened because out of nowhere, there were just obstacle after obstacle and just like so many attacks. And I was like, okay, God, I see what you're doing here. You want me to talk about how to have a renewed mind 
And he definitely revealed that to me in 2020 when I did my first Daniel Fast ever. And there's such a long story behind it, but I just knew like this was so necessary for this time. I know not only just for me, but for all women out there. Yeah, I loved that you share just how the book really did flow out of such a hard testing period. And you shared too, just some confessions of fears and anxieties. Like I feel like from uh, people that are watching you, you would come across as like not ever struggling with fears or insecurities or any of those worries. Can you share a bit about your personal struggles and your confessions? Yes. So I'll start with the very first one that I mentioned, and then everybody else, you guys could go read the book and find out. Um, but the first one that I talk about is that I didn't come to Christ because I loved him and that, like I just desired him. I came to Christ and, you know, I was saved because I was terrified of just the concept of hell. And um, during my my just my personal journey with God, like he showed me that my testimony is now that I see him as a loving father, not just the God who condemns and judge like judges. Like now I learn, I have learned that he judges in my favor. And that changed everything for me because I used to think I didn't have a, a testimony. I used to think that my mother's testimony was mine. She's been ill for majority of my life, and I have seen how the Lord has shown love to her. And so I was just like, okay, well, she has it. I believe that it's there, and I see how he shows up for her, and, you know, God is good. I was taught, like, you know, I was royalty since I was a little kid, but, like, I didn't really experience him until, like, I just developed that intimate connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you shared that a lot of times freedom from fears and anxiety is found by correcting our view of God and having that right personal relationship with him. So for somebody who's watching today that um, maybe just gets their idea of who God is from the world, things that they've heard instead of who he is in scripture, how would you encourage and speak that truth into their heart? I encourage you to just go into the word, just dive in. I know it could be really difficult because it's like, where do I begin? But even if you just start with a Google search of just like, what does God say about me? I created a list of biblical affirmations for queens. That's what I called it. And it was just so funny how it happened because again, I was going through a rough time in my life. At the time, it was like a breakup in 2018. And I remember um, getting dressed up for my birthday and I sat down in a chair that was in a restaurant and it literally, it just looked like a throne. And I remember that like for everyone who sat in that chair, they felt like royalty. And so when I sat down to write about, um, I was writing a blog post. I was like, hmm, what should I talk about like for this year? Like what encouragement can I give? Um, and I reflected, I saw the picture again. I was like, ooh, queendom, like definitely I could do that. And um, God just gave me the idea to create biblical affirmations and to show um, the world really that when it comes from the word, it is so much more powerful. Truly, his word um, just covers all. And um, when we begin to repeat it over ourselves, declare it over our lives, definitely things change. And I remember creating a video on YouTube about it, and it has done so well. And I still receive testimonies to this day. Oh. I love that because it is the truth and the power of God's word and how he speaks into us about how he sees us, how he looks at us, delights in us and sings over us and just loves us with everything that he is. And so in the industry that you're in with fashion and modeling and also your background in pageantry, um, the I'm wondering how much you have struggled with comparison, comparing yourself to other women. So can you talk a little bit how you have found freedom from that? Yes. So I wouldn't say that I find comparison in that arena because I'm like, OK, cool. Like, I know who I am. I knew I like I know who God created me to be. 
Um, but it wasn't until, oh my gosh, again, such a rough, rough time. And it was during the pandemic. Oh my goodness. When I tell you, I was like, what is going on with my mind? There's so much in here. And so I talked to God about it and he showed me how to mute, like literally how to put my mind on mute, how to do it on social media as well, because that's where comparison was beginning to come in. Uh, so though I wouldn't say I struggle with that in regards to like fashion and media, I would say definitely I struggled with that when it came to seeing other Christian influencers, because at the time I was doing more so of that and my brand was adorned in armor and not I am Tara Lynn, not the rebrand. And I was just very confused as to like, I was like, God, like they posting fluff and I'm talking about like the nitty gritty and I'm just like, what's here? Like nothing is like working, I don't get it. And I know that you're telling me like, it just matters if you reach that one person and I know that, but like, when is my breakthrough? Mm -hmm. And so I, like he taught me basically just keep your eyes, keep my eyes on him. And yeah, that has been the key for me to like overcoming any form of comparison. Yeah, oh, keeping our eyes fixed on him. Yeah, you know, Tara Lynn, when you were just talking about, you know, going through the pandemic, because are you, you're in, are you in New York City? Yes, I was in New York City at the time. New Jersey, yeah. New Jersey, was... but that whole area. So I just like, I have friends, good friends that were during the pandemic. I mean, it was a really, really rough time that like what you were walking through and like going through and just when you were talking about that point of breakthrough and just going through a hard season. But I like what you said is something you had to put your mind on mute and fix your eyes on him. So can you talk to us a little bit about some of the scriptures or how even you had to like still your spirit before the Lord and just really focus on him when all your world is just being turned upside down and you can't control things that are happening. Yes, there are so many. Um, definitely the peace I give to you. Um, that verse that talks about, it's not about what the world gives, but what the father can give to us, the prince of peace. Um, but also I, in the book of Isaiah, um, the Lord talks about um, if you keep your mind on me, if you're fixated on me, if you have your gaze on me, then I will give you perfect peace. And that changed the game for me completely. And again, I came across, I mean, I've heard that verse before, but I remember when I was fasting, I was just laying down on my bed and I was like, God, I'm like, I'm bored. You know, it's a pandemic. Um, I'm doing this Daniel fast. What else do you want me to do? Like I'm listening to a podcast, trying to figure out other ways I could spend time with him. And um, I remember I was like, you know what, God, I'm just going to I'm going to sleep. I have nothing to do. So I was like laying down, and at the time I wasn't sleeping in my own room. I was sleeping in my grandmother's room. And so I turned over on my pillow and I saw on the wall that verse, and I was just like, wow, okay. I hear you, I see you, and I desire that perfect peace. Mm -hmm. And so another area that you speak into that I think is so relevant, especially for um, millennials and honestly even up through like I'm Gen X is the topic of purity. Uh, we've come out of purity culture. And so share a little bit about how the world sees purity and what you have found God says about purity. So oftentimes the world and even just Christian culture, we see purity as just perfection. But I've learned that that is not what God is calling us to be. In fact, like when we are in him, he is made perfect, like, you know, in us. He's already perfect, you know, but the more we seek him, the more we will find him. Um, and that also includes in us. Um, and so when I talk about uh, purity, I'm just talking about having a heart that chases God, having a mind that is fixated on him, just desiring to want to serve him in spirit and in truth. And he does the purification process, the beautif beautification process as well. It is not something that we can do on our own. And it's not even just like the outward things, like it's stuff that is on the inside. God will, will no, what would he do? He will reveal, right? He will reveal it in us and will show us how to transform from the inside out. Amen. 
And then you had a shift that you talk about where God's word truly became power for your life. Can you unpack what is the shift and how can someone apply it? Yes. Okay. So the acronyms, that's another thing, but I'll just say of like the overall, the shift is repentance. It truly is. I believe that we're living in a culture. Um, we're very unapologetic about a lot of things, um, but repentance isn't even just that. It's a turning away. It's the changing of the mind. It's going to God and saying like, forgive me and help me to go in the way that you want for me. And so I just believe it's incredibly important that we are always drawn to repentance so that he could also lead us into deliverance. So in the last couple minutes that we have, can you just speak into, um, into your generation who might be watching or women who might be watching? What truth do you want to leave them with today? So to you, I say your life matters. You have a purpose and God has a perfect, perfect plan for you. You don't need to look to the right, to the left. You don't need to see what was done before you. You just need to know that God is for you. He is not against you. He's fighting for you. And he is waiting for you to step into your royal calling as an overcomer. Woo, that's good stuff, Tara Lynn. Thank you for living into who God has made you to be and inspiring women to continue to grow into who God made them to be. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right, well, we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we've got some of that powerful God's word for you. Cornerstone Television exists to spread the good news through Bible-based programs and a fully staffed prayer line. Through CTVN, lives are saved, hearts, minds, and bodies are healed, and Jesus is lifted high. We can't do this work without you. Would you consider sending a gift this month to keep the gospel moving forward with power? When you give, we'll send you Listen, Love, Repeat, which presents scriptural examples of those who lived alert, including Jesus, who noticed those who least expected to be seen, gives creative ideas for showing love to friends and family, suggests practical ways to reach out to the lonely, marginalized outcast, helps you comfort the grieving, and so much more. Ask for your copy of Listen, Love, Repeat when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Today, as we dive into the scripture, we're gonna to go to Isaiah 26, verse three. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Today and every day, there is not a time that you can take your gaze away from God and maintain and remain in peace. You know, this morning as we came the, driving into the studio, I kept having this impression, this feeling that there was someone who is truly in a desperate state. And you feel lost without hope. And I don't know what it is that you're facing. I, I'm not there with you, but there is a God who sees and he knows and he is with you in the thick of it, in the dust and the dirtiness of it and in the mess of it. And if you just take your gaze off of all that you see is hopeless and look to the one who is hope, just fix your eyes on Jesus, see him on that cross and resurrected. When you do that, this is what this scripture promises. When you simply take a moment and fix your eyes on the king of glory, perfect peace will flood you. He is shalom, the peace that comes, that mends, that makes you whole and complete. Even if your circumstance hasn't changed right away, he will come in like a flood, filling you with hope, peace, and encouragement. God is true and he is faithful to his word. I can tell you, and I know Sydney and Anna can say the same. Every single one of us has had moments where we felt hopeless. But when we fix our gaze on Jesus, 
His peace came in like a hurricane and filled us with hope that we needed for just the next moment, for just the next day. And as you continue to go back to that river, to that well that never runs dry, each day will get filled with more and more of him. And like I said, even if your circumstances, Sydney, don't change right away, he changes everything within you. And I just feel, I really, really felt this morning that there is someone who needs to know that you do matter and God sees you and he is with you today. Thank you so much for just like what the Holy Spirit put on your heart of just like God seeing you and something that you said, Angel, that was so powerful that his peace is like a hurricane that comes rushing in. And you know, one thing when you're just talking about this peace of God, I remember I was going through such a season when there was no peace in my life. Everything just feel like it was falling apart. There was even moments, there was a season where I just wanted to end it all. And maybe that's you today. Maybe it's like you're ashamed to say that, you know what, I've been dealing and battling with these thoughts of suicide. I've been dealing with these thoughts of hopelessness. I've been dealing with these thoughts of depression and I just don't know what to do right now. And I'm really afraid. And can I tell you that God is in the midst of that situation and all you have to do, even if you're in your living room right now, wherever you are, is take a moment and to pause, to cry out to him. And even in that season, I just remember I was driving at one point and this song came on. If you should go, go on YouTube and check it out. It like completely wrecked my world. And I just remember weeping and I was crying and it's by Anna Gold and it's called Peace. Mm. And she was just talking about the peace, even in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of everything that you're walking and you're going through. But the most powerful thing she said, and I had a revelation because I never saw it this way. And Angela, you said it. Peace is a person. Yes. And his name is Jesus. You have to get a revelation at peace. It's not this feeling and it's not this sensation, but it's when Jesus is inside of us and it's the peace that surpasses all understanding, the hope of glory. He's within us. He's moving in us. And no matter what you're walking through, I know some people are going through so much hell in their lives right now. But can I, we just want to encourage you today if you are on your last rope, if you feel like I'm not reigning, I don't feel like my crown is tilted, we're just picking up your crown today, Boop, we're shifting it over to remind you of who God has called you to be and he has a purpose and he has a plan out for your life and he wants to deliver you out of that pit of darkness and bring you into the light. So if that's you today, we don't want you to leave this program feeling like you're isolated, feeling like you're alone. Give us a call at our prayer line. I know the number is on the screen at 888-665-4483. Anna, what is on your thoughts and yeah. on your heart? I'm thinking of the scripture where Jesus says, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. You see, Jesus is our peace. And as we bring him in close to us, as we hide ourselves in him, as we immerse our mind and our heart, everything that we are, as we immerse it in Jesus, that is where our peace is. And I so love that we're talking about the, the times in our lives where we're walking through hell on earth. Like not only do you feel broken or shattered, but you feel like your life has been blown into like literal dust. And like, can Jesus actually do something with the dust of my life? Yes. Well, if you remember way back in that first book of Genesis, God took the dust of the earth and he breathed on it and he breathed his breath of life and he created man and he created woman. And it was right there at the very beginning that God decided, well, I mean, before he even created them, he decided that he wanted a relationship with his beautiful creation. He said, they are very good. So friend, today know that God wants that personal relationship with you because he knows this world has been hard and he wants to put you back together again. He wants to show you the masterpiece that you are. He wants to show you that purpose that he infused in you before he even made this earth. So today, if you've never given your life to Jesus, this is your time. It is only in Jesus where you will find your best and your real life. All you have to do is welcome him in as Savior and Lord. Repent 
of what you, of your sins, and he will make you whole and make you a new creation. I love that you said, you know, he'll give us, he wants my peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. And you also hit on the dust because scripture says that he'll give us beauty for ashes. He wants to give you the oil of joy for all of your sorrow. He wants to give you dancing for all of your grieving and your pain. He is the God of a great exchange. So whatever ashes you're holding today, whatever you're looking at, the remnants, the fragments of your life, the fractured identity you're walking in, whatever it is for you today, he says, when you give it to me, I'll give you beauty today. When you give it to me, I'll give you joy in exchange for that. It doesn't seem like a fair exchange rate, but that's who he is and that's what he longs for. So I know Sydney today, God is looking and saying, just give me the little bit of ashes you have that I can exceed it and give you beauty for all of your pain. Mm. You know, so even what you're just talking about that, like I know Anna, we're just like talking about in Genesis and the beauty and the ashes and how he put the dust, but you know what's so beautiful is this like he breathed on the dust. And there's a Hebrew word, it's called neshama. It's like the divine essence of God breathed upon the dust. And I wish there was a movie to see how that all came about. Like he just went, Whoo. It's amazing. And did you even know that they say, if you hear the listening to our breath, it's like, it sounds like Yahweh. It's like the words and the Hebrew language. I mean, literally as we're breathing, we are, every time we breathe, like all of creation is breathing, it is Yahweh. It is the breath of God. It's the divine essence of God. It's the beauty of God. Everything he's doing, he's breathing in you. And when Anna said that everything, he said it was good. It's so interesting because literally yesterday, I was in my prayer closet spending some time with Jesus and God gave, spoke to me about the word tov. That's what it says in Hebrew, it means good. Do you know what tov means? It means to be in harmony. <laughs> it means to be in tune with God. So today, we just want you to know that we have a good, good father. That when he's saying, when he said it is good, he was saying, my creation, my son and my daughter, I'm breathing into you because I desire to be in harmony with you to do a dance, to sing over you. Isn't that a beautiful picture of our God? Yeah. That he calls us to be in harmony and fellowship, to be one with him. And so today, that is our greatest hope for you, that you would be in one, in sync, in harmony with the heavenly father, because that's the greatest hope that we have.